Okay, so now we are going to go in depth. In this topic, we are going to really get into the specific guidelines within the quality guidelines. Actually, Google has listed a few illicit practices. Like I told you all today, do not think that it is limited to only these and that you could do something deceptive or manipulative that doesn't fit into these categories. If you did that, it, you could still be in trouble, okay? Anything manipulative, anything deceptive to the users or search engines is trouble, okay? So consider yourself warned. I'm gonna go ahead with the specific guidelines now. We look at the specific guidelines. I have a bunch of them already open for you. So we're gonna look at individually, right? We'll see what does each one actually mean and how it could result in a bad experience for the user, okay? So we don't want that to happen. We don't want bad experience for the users, for our customers, do we? So first one, if you notice in the list, is automatically generated content. Automatically generated content or auto-generated content, as you can see, is something that's done programmatically. You, you use software programs that generate content automatically without human intervention. So you put some content, it remixes it, and, and process that words and then pushes out something like it's brand new original content, which is not in this case because it's not actually written by a human being, but a computer software program. And um, Google also says that text that makes no sense to the reader, but it may contain the search keywords that the users are searching for is not a good thing that is an automatically generated content. Text translated by an automated tool without human review or curation before publishing. So before you publish your content on your website, if the website has content that is not reviewed by you or your fellow human beings, then there is trouble, right? It's, if, if it doesn't make sense, it's not gonna be useful for the user and Google is not going to like it. Uh, text generated through automated processes, text generated using automated synonymizing or obfuscation techniques. Well, synonymizing and obfuscation means just confusing content or using words and finding the meanings of those words and trying to use them on your website. Anyway, all these are considered deceptive techniques. Do not do auto-generated content. Write content that is original and reviewed by you before it is published on your website. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the next one in this list, which is link schemes. So my potential search engine optimizers, remember this, website ranking on Google is dependent on many different factors and one of the biggest factors is backlinks. If you remember, what set Google apart from the rest of the search engines was the backlinks, the citations, if you remember. Now, if people understood that backlinks are going to be crucial for your ranking, while some people followed the right approach of getting the backlinks, some black hat practitioners, some people who were looking at shortcuts to rank on Google decided to do something called link schemes. What is a link scheme? Any links to your website that is intended to manipulate the page rank. Oh, by the way, page rank is Google's first ever algorithm. The algorithm, as I already mentioned, is about backlinks, okay? The more quality, more relevant, more, uh, more specific content backlinks you get for your website, the better your chances of ranking on Google. So the algorithm that Google used is called PageRank. So any links that is intended to manipulate this PageRank or Google's algorithm to rank higher on Google search results is considered an illicit practice, a black hat practice. Okay, so you're not supposed to do that. Buying or selling links that pass PageRank, that's bad. 
you you cannot you should not buy or sell links excessive link exchanges now you have a friend they ha she has a blog and you have a blog you can't just say i'm going to give you 100 links you give me 100 links in exchange that link exchange um, in, in an excessive uh, capacity is actually against the Google's guidelines. So it's, it's, it's a part of the link scheme and you wouldn't want to get into that. Number three, large scale article marketing and guest posting campaigns with keyword rich anchor text. And before we could get into this, I want to take a little time to explain what anchor text links are. You see right here, page rank, when I take my mouse over there, when I hover over, it turns into a hand representing a link. So the text that is used as the words that are going to link from one piece of content to another is called an anchor text. I'll repeat that for you. The text that is used as a hyperlink to connect one piece of content to another piece of content is anchor text. In this case, page rank is a hyperlink or page rank the word is your anchor text okay now now that you're clear about that using keywords as anchor text could help google rank you higher so again people misuse that abuse that by by optimizing using the keywords as anchor text wherever possible so that is against google's guidelines now google doesn't like it if you know majority of your links anchor text contains the keyword it shouldn't okay it should be natural meaning your links should have the keyword once in a while but mostly it should be something something related okay i'm not saying it should be generic but it should be something related or sometimes it could just be your website www dot your domain name dot com for example or it could just be click here no more read more all these are good point in discussion here is that you cannot just use your keywords as anchor text everywhere that's against google's guidelines moving on uh, so i was talking about large scale article marketing and guest posting now this is what happened in the past, when people realized that links are going to play a major role in your Google search engine ranking, they used to go to some of the open websites. When I say open websites, these websites allowed you to write articles or do guest posting. You go, to, go into another website, write posts, some informative, educative posts, and then give a backlink to your website, which is a good idea. However, people started abusing that as well. Instead of making their posts valuable, helping users find the content, they started writing content that was not useful for users, purely for the sake of getting backlinks. That's article marketing and guest posting. Those don't work anymore. Google does not support articles and guest posts that add no value to customers. That's a little bit about link schemes. Do not buy or sell backlinks. Do not exchange backlinks. Or do not write content that is not useful for customers or your website visitors, but you do it only for the sake of getting backlinks. An absolute no, no. So moving on. The next one is called manual actions, right? But before that, I want to, go to uh, get into something called cloaking, OK? Cloaking is another illicit practice, a deceptive, manipulative practice that can be really a bad experience for your users. Cloaking is the practice of showing content that is completely different to your search engine compared to what shows up or what's displayed to the user. I'll give you an example. In fact, Matt Cut's video right here on this page will give you a very clear description of how cloaking uh, happens and how Google catches it. Cloaking refers to the practice of presenting different content or URLs to human users and search engines. So what the search engines see on your website is significantly different from what the users will see. Imagine this. 
a kid who is about 9, 10 years old, goes to Google, searches for Peppa Pig, the cartoon, for example. He or she is getting a bunch of results. He clicks on the first result. That URL is taking the user to an adult website. Remember, this is a 9-year-old kid who is looking for cartoons, and he is being shown an adult website. Very bad experience. That's an awful experience. You should avoid that. You should not do that. The content that you show to Google search engines, for which you would rank for, and what the users get to see on your website should be one and the same. If you do something like this, programmatically manipulate content that is shown to search engines, which is different from what is shown to users, then you're practicing something called cloaking, and that can lead to Google penalty. Avoid that at all costs because it's going to be a terrible experience for your users. Moving on, the, the next one in the list of black hat practices is sneaky redirects. Now let's say there was this individual, David, who has a shop in, in the main street in Chicago, Illinois. He's moved from one location to another part of Chicago within Illinois. The first thing that he would do would obviously put a board up there for his loyal customers to know that he's moved from one location to another, which is absolutely fine. Now, if you create a website and then you're moving to a new website, there is something called redirection. You can let the customers know that you moved from www, your old domain name dot com, to www dot your new domain name dot com. However, there are certain people, certain black hat practitioners, who actually let people search and find a website, but when they click on the search result, go to the website, they are redirected to a completely different website. Again, a deceptive practice. They do not find what they're looking for, which is a bad user experience. So sneaky redirects are nothing but deceiving the customer when he thinks he's going to go to a certain page, he's taken to a completely different page with content that is not relevant to what he's searching for. Absolute no, no, again. The next one is called affiliate programs. Affiliate marketing has been one of the most powerful internet marketing tools. People have made millions of dollars using affiliate marketing. Imagine this. I am promoting a refrigerator from Amazon. If I'm an affiliate marketer, I would be looking at how to add value for my users who are trying to find the best refrigerator in 2018, for example. Okay, so somebody is searching for best refrigerators in 2018. My blog post or my website ideally should give all the useful information for that user in terms of what are the pros, what are the cons of this refrigerator, how does it weigh uh, with the rest of the crowd or the, or the other refrigerators in the market and so on and so forth. Now that is value addition. People would love to read about it, understand, and then make their buying decision. On the other hand, some affiliate marketers, what they do is go to affiliate or go to Amazon website or any other uh, merchant website, just copy the product description, prices, pick up the pictures and they just slap it on their website and think that that is value addition. Unfortunately, that's not going to work. Google calls that thin affiliate websites or thin content sites. What does thin content actually mean? It's very simple. If you don't add value to your users, your content is not meaty. If it's not meaty, it is thin content. So thin content deserves to be penalized. That's how Google looks at it. So if you're thinking about affiliate marketing, excellent choice. You could do that. You could make a lot of money with it as well. However, keep in mind that you make money when people buy, and people buy if they find the content on your website useful. So the foundation is to create good, valuable content for your users and not manipulate just by copying content from your merchant site and putting it on your affiliate website. Okay, so I hope that's clear. We're going to move on to the last part, which is about 
what happens if you were penalized by Google? Ideally, it shouldn't happen, but if you did, unfortunately, get into trouble and if Google penalized your website, you would want to take corrective action. Google is going to specifically tell you what went wrong with your website, why Google penalized your website. You would have to take corrective actions and then right here on this page, reconsideration request, you are going to go into search console. Once you verify and all that, you have the option to submit a request for reconsideration, okay? So Google complains, there's a problem, you are going to take some corrective action and obviously you'd have to put a request to reconsider and Google will take care of it. I wanna make a point clear here. There are literally 1.8 billion websites and more in the, on the internet right now. So Google is trying to index and rank as many websites as possible. So it's not really possible for Google to manually look at certain websites and say this went wrong or that went wrong so, you know, even if you did put a reconsideration request, it's obviously going to take time. So the good thing is not to get into um, the Google's penalty or flag box, uh, as I might call it. So Google is actually working on automated replies or automated uh, flagging. So it's not really going to manually flag you every time. So just be aware of that. So finally, Keep in mind that if Google did flag you for whatever black hat practice, make sure you check out this uh, webmaster guidelines. It has links where you can first of all fix your website's problems before you submit a reconsideration request. That takes care of the webmaster guidelines. A quick recap, there are two major categories within webmaster guidelines. One is the general guidelines which talks about the do's and there is quality guidelines which is about don'ts. All you need to do is ensure that you avoid the don'ts. It's as simple as that. They've already listed a few deceptive techniques. Know them, avoid them. And if something is not listed and still deceptive, do not do them because you know the right from wrong. Avoid wrong and you'll be fine. Remember, your content must be helping your users create valuable, useful content. People will love you, so will Google. In the next section, we are going to go in depth into on-page SEO, step-by-step, hands-on, practical, exciting times ahead. Stay tuned, thank you.